Uh, last week we were looking at the Song of Solomon and uh, we're going to visit there again this morning. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. And if you missed that, um, just to explain very briefly, um, last week as we looked at this, we looked at the soul's desire in wanting intimacy with God. There was the kiss of redemption, God sending Jesus into the world to die for us. There was a kiss of reconciliation, God requiring us to respond. And as we respond like the prodigal son, the father's heart, arms were open wide to greet him back into the family. And then there was the kiss of reverence, which we finished on, which is the outworking of our relationship through worship. And the word worship actually means in places to kiss toward. And so there is this desire that God wants from us of intimacy to walk with him. And we finish really at the place where the woman had the alabaster box of ointment and she broke this precious ointment on the feet of Jesus. And that's where I want to start our thoughts this morning as we continue to look at just these first couple of verses of Song of Solomon. She was caressing, kissing, anointing the feet of Jesus. She wanted intimacy. She loved God. She loved Jesus. And she was there for no other reason, not as an exhibitionist, but as a person who deeply loved her Saviour. And it brings me to the second point that we have, and that's the soul's delight. Her passion was to bless Jesus. She was so grateful that God had forgiven. Her heart was overflowing with love. Are we at that place this morning where we have tasted and felt the love of God? Your salvation story, does it excite you that you've come to know Jesus Christ and that something has happened within your life that you say, yes, thank you, Jesus? Now, I'm not a wine drinker, so I would know very little about wine. I'm sure a lot of you here are more experienced than me Sorry, that was... (laughs) Did that come out right? (laughs) John's not here. He's quite good at wines, isn't he? But it says here in the Song of Solomon, for your love is better than wine. So I may not know much about wines, but I do know something about the love of God, the fact that he loves me. I don't deserve it, but he does. The maiden in the Song of Solomon discovers that there is something better than the best wines. There is something better than the best ointments. And that is the name of Jesus. What's in a name? Angela means God's messenger or angel. Rachel, and I'm sorry for this, Rachel, you hear. (laughs) It means sheep's friend. (laughs) So if you hear the bleating of the sheep, that's uh, Rachel's friends this morning. Sorry. Peter means rock. But the name that far surpasses any other name has to be Jesus, doesn't it? He is the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and the omega, the anointed one, the head of all things, the healer, the Lord of glory. He is our hope. He is our joy. He is our salvation. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and I could go on all morning just giving you all the names of Jesus. His name outstrips in title any other name. Title after title belongs to him. And the maiden had found something, that the king's name was precious. Philippians 2 verse 9 says this, Therefore God has exalted him to the highest place to give him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How precious is the name of Jesus to you this morning? How much do you love 
to hear that name? What does it actually do for you? This isn't a static name, it's like ointment poured forth. Buddha is dead. Muhammad is dead. But Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And everything that we have this morning is living, the living word of God. We have a name that is living and powerful. And when we whisper that name, when we're going through difficulties and problems, we find there is power in the mighty name of Jesus. She whispers his name, this maiden. She shouts his name. She meditates on his name. It's the fragrance that is in her life. Is it the fragrance that is touching us this morning, touching every fibre of our body, soul and spirit? This is intimacy. And this is what the Song of Solomon is all about. It's that intimacy with God. When we get to that place of intimacy with him, we'll want it to overflow. You can't keep it shut up in a bottle, the name of Jesus. You can't keep your experience shut up in a bottle. Which brings me to point three, and that is the soul's direction. To get true direction, you need both desire and delight. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. Compare that to what we have in the text in Song of Solomon. Chapter 1 verse 3, Draw me and I will run after you. Draw me and we will run together. A question, where is your Christian life taking you this morning? Where are you going? What is your purpose? We've recently done the network course to try and help us identify the strengths. And to a degree, it's a good tool, perhaps highlighting the talents and the giftings that we might have and showing where we can use them. But if there is no passion, if there is no desire to follow the Lord, then it's to no avail. The prayer of the maiden to the king is, draw me, I want you in my life. Draw me, I need you, that I can follow you. This takes us from the mediocre Christian walk into something more deeper within our lives, and that's running after God. Draw me, and I will run with you. Running means you need to be fit. It requires training, regular exercise, which I'm sure you're all familiar with and you do on a regular daily basis. If I were to ask you this morning to run down to the garage and back, (laughs) would you make it in one piece? It's not so bad going downhill, is it? But you've got to come up bank and, well, it's not so easy when you've got to climb. I won't put it to the test this morning. I won't even ask how many of you think you could make it. But the same applies to our spiritual life. Are we running the race or are we spiritually out of shape? Hebrews 12 says, Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Now, I don't know why, but I've always assumed that the goal is at the end of the race. And I think there is a a scripture in Philippians that sort of suggests that. And that's logical. But as I was meditating on this and looking at the Song of Solomon, the maiden wants us to run with the king. She is being drawn by and to him. We're asking God to draw us, that's the prayer, and we will then run after him or with him. He is our goal. Not something future, but something now. He is the God of the now. God isn't dangling a carrot before us and saying, Brother Brian, in 20 years, you're going to get the goal. (laughs) Sister Rachel, in 10 years, 40 years, you're going to get the goal. It doesn't. It says, draw me. 
and I will run after you. If you're willing to spiritually run after Jesus, I believe that we get the goal every day because we have fellowship with Jesus, because we know him on a daily basis. Are we focusing our daily attention to Jesus? He is the most precious person that there is. And don't forget, we're talking about intimacy. And if I've got to run another 20 years before I get to the goal, I quit. Yes, there is a goal at the end of the line. But, you know, I'm not waiting for the time when I reach the pearly gates and God shakes my hand and he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, here's your crown. As fantastic as that will be, that when we reach heaven, I believe that he is the God of the now. I believe that he is the God of today. I believe that he is the God who wants to meet us in our daily experience. He's already kissed us with his love. We're returning that by worshipping and saying, Lord, we love you. We, we return that kiss to you. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, it's interesting. It says, our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, he was the starter of my faith. That's when it all kicked into being. That's when I came alive in my spirit. I came to know Jesus Christ. He is the author of my faith. And do you know something? He's going to be the finisher of my faith when I reach the pearly gates. Well, there won't be pearly gates, but I'd... you know what I mean. Yes, there are pearly gates there, but uh, I'm not quite sure what will happen or how it will all come into being. But, you know, how am I going to reach there? How am I going to last another 10 years? How am I going to last to the end of the journey? How am I going to make it? Do you know something? I can only do it on a day-to-day basis as I meet the goal in my life, and that goal is Jesus Christ. I can only do it with him as my running partner. Nothing would delight God more this morning than for you to pray this small prayer. Draw me, Lord. Let us run together. My goal today is Jesus. My goal is running by his side. When God gave the manna to the children of Israel in the desert, It only lasted for one day. It went mouldy if they kept it for the next day. God is giving you enough for today. He's giving me enough for today. And it says in Lamentations 3, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Fourth point, the soul's destiny. When you run with God, you will find that your intimacy will grow with him and unexpected things will begin to happen. And the Song of Solomon is a beautiful book. Every day that you get up and you say, I want to run with you, Jesus, I want you to be the goal in my life today, you will find that there's a destiny that God has got for you. Song of Solomon, verse 4 says, Draw me and I will run after you. And what happened? The king brings me into his chambers. Hallelujah. Do you want to go into the chambers of God? Do you want to be in that intimate place with God? Do you want to be in that place where God resides? Those who run with God will go to his chambers. In chapter 2, verse 4, again in the Song of Solomon, he brought me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is love. This is intimacy. This is the relationship of those that run with God. God wants us to get serious with him. We don't have any daughters, but uh, when your daughter brings home a young man to meet his family, it's getting serious, so I understand. 
And God wants to be serious with us. He wants to take us to the Father's house. He wants us to know the blessings that are there. Do you know there's one scripture I don't understand? You're amazed at that, aren't you? Romans 8, verse 17. If children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. It's too much for me to understand. This man, Jesus, this God, Jesus, wants to be my running partner and there I am out doing my daily jog with Jesus and he turns to me and he says, do you know you're an heir with me? At that point I collapse on the floor. Jesus runs on ahead and he looks back and he shouts, get up Clarky, let's run together. (laughs) You're a joint heir with me. While I'm still pondering that, he shows me the delights along the way. And he says, I will give you the desires of your heart. When we are running with him, we will be in the right place at the right time (coughs) for the right reason. Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And we've already sang it this morning, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. It is only as we run with Jesus that we can get into the throne room of heaven the most key the most important address in the universe and God is drawing us there draw me and I will run after you the king brings us in the king is the key the king is the door the king is the way into heaven's throne room in conclusion God is wooing us to a closer walk with him. <coughs> Excuse me. He's calling us to intimacy of love. He wants us to be so in love with him that just at the mention of the name of Jesus we are excited, we are encouraged and as we begin to run with him and he is our daily goal then we will find that we do exploits for God. Will you be his running partner this morning? Will you say, yes, Jesus, I want to run with you today. I want to learn what it is, that day-to-day experience of having you as the goal of my life.